we're going to take a look at two very useful functions for operating on lists. These are functions that operate on the sort of front portion of a list and they're called take and drop. So let's illustrate what they do uh, quickly in the uh, in the terminal. Um, so take given uh, account, let's take five elements from one to ten, takes the first five elements, whereas its partner drop discards the first five elements. Of course um, what happens if there aren't enough elements, if we just have, th for example, three elements? Well, you, you drop as many as you can. And similarly, if you want to take more elements than you've got, um, then you take as many as you can. If you want to take, um, well, let's, let's take another example. Let's take a negative number of, of uh, elements. We get the um, empty list. And similarly for dropping a negative number, so none of these things give us any errors. So dropping a negative number is the same as dropping zero. Okay, so that's take and drop. Um, and now let's think about how we define them. So I'll just um, comment them out in the, or rather add them, remove them from my list of imports. Uh, so that the original take and drops are hidden. I can still access them if I index them with p, p.take and p.drop. Okay. Um, now the, the structure of this, these, these are interesting examples because the structure of the recursion is a little bit different. Um, it's different because we're actually going to do recursion in both arguments at the same time. To explain what I mean, um, let's look at a specific example that we had earlier. Let's start with take. Um, take five elements from one to ten. Another way of computing the same result would be if we've already taken the first element, then what we need to do to compute the same result would be to take four elements from 2 to 10. That gives us the same result. So if, we take the, if we're going to take five things, then we can take the first one, and then in order to compute the rest, we could do it by taking four things from the rest of the list. So this example suggests the recursion strategy, and it's a, and it's a different one than the ones we've seen so far. It's a case where we're going to do recursion in both of the arguments at the same time. So a recursion on the list and a recursion on the number. So I'm going to start by writing the, um, the recursive case. The recursive case, I'm going to assume that n is um, bigger than 0, um, because otherwise this wouldn't be a recursive case. It would be one of the base cases. And I'm going to assume the list is not empty. And I'm going to ask, how do I compute this in terms of not just take of n and x's, but actually take of n minus 1 and x's, just as we saw in this example. We could compute take of 5 on a bigger list in terms of take of 4 on a smaller list. And the way we did that was to add the first element on the front. So that is indeed our recursive case. We add x on the front of what we get by taking n minus 1 from x's. OK, now we need to look at the base case, or should I say base cases, because actually there are two cases. Because either, because either n uh, reaches zero or is already negative first, or the list is empty. They correspond to two base cases. So let's write the, the one for n first. Take n and it doesn't um, matter what you have. In the case when n is less than or equal to zero is the empty list. If we're going to take less than or equal to zero things from a list, we return the empty list. Okay, so that's one of the base cases. The other base cases is when we don't care how many things you want to take, doesn't matter how many you want to take, if you haven't got anything left, then the answer is also the empty list. So we see we have two base cases, one of which uses a guard to note when n is smaller than or equal to zero, and then the answer is empty. And the other base case is when there's nothing left to take, so we must give empty. So we can, if we reload that, we can um, just check that these still do the things that we expect them to do. Indeed, they do. Okay, what about the partner function drop? Well, drop is kind of similar. Let's start with the um, recursive case for drop. If we want to drop n elements from some list x's, then what are we going to do? 
Well, if, if we're assuming here that n is, is, is greater than zero, we're going to compute this in terms of the smaller thing, drop, of n minus one things from the smaller list. So how do we compute the answer we want from this thing here? Well, maybe it's useful to see an example. Um, we'll need p.drop, the original prelude version of drop. If we're dropping five things from the list from one to 10, we want to compute that in terms of the dropping of four things from the list two to 10. As we see, in fact, that is exactly what we want to compute. So in fact, there is nothing else we need to do with this. This is what we want. But that means the x here is, is something we don't care about. We're not going to use the x. We're throwing the x away. Well, that's what drop does. It throws elements away. So we can also replace that by the don't care pattern to make that clearer in the, uh, in the uh, definition that we have. OK, let me add the, um, the base cases. The base cases are very similar to the, um, to the other case. When we've run out of things to drop, there's nothing left to drop. Um, there's nothing we can do other than return the empty list. However, if we're dropping n from a non-empty list, or maybe non-empty list, when n is less than or equal to zero, not m, sorry, it's n that's less than or equal to zero, then the answer will be, it's not the empty list in this case, it's whatever we've got. If we're not going to throw away anything, because we're asking to throw away zero or fewer elements, then the answer is the list that we have. Just line those up a bit. And there's my definition of drop. And I can just quickly test that. That was before I reloaded the file. After I reload the file, dropping four elements leaves the, um, from, from two to 10 leaves six, seven, eight, nine, 10.